that somebody's in his jail cell, then you're still stuck between realms because you're damned. All I can say is, good, proper thing. Hope you get another 6,000 years to go. I mean, if you brutally murdered the girl. If, on the other hand, you were wrongfully convicted and hanged, um, our bad. Welcome to beautiful St. Andrews. That is the Charlotte County Jail, built in 1832, which is the original jail for St. Andrews. And this is the Charlotte County Courthouse, both of which are allegedly haunted. Exactly. And you know what we're going to do tonight? Uh, be haunted. Exactly. Where? We're spending the evening in a jail cell. You sure? Absolutely. Together? Maybe. You scared? <laughs> With you, I am. <laughs> While researching locations, we got a tip from a local investigation group in New Brunswick. And they told us about a courthouse and an old jail in St. Andrews where in 1942, a local woman, Bernice Connors, was murdered by an RAF sergeant stationed there during the war, Tom Hutchings. This seemed like a natural place for a haunting to occur. So we contacted Elaine Bruff, a local historian and author, and she confirmed that there were a number of stories circulating about the jail and the old courthouse. So Holly and I decided, perfect place to go take a look for some ghosts. I actually did tours of this courthouse for years. Fascinated with all the stories to the point that I actually did write a book on St. Andrews called Mysteries of the Night, Tales and Ghosts of St. Andrews, which talked about all the stories, the ghosts, the legends, and some unusual happenings that we've had happen in the area. This is the Charlotte County Courthouse that we're in. Uh, it was built in 1840. It is thought to be the oldest continuous use courthouse in Canada. It is also a historic site for Canada. It is one of the prized possessions of St. Andrews. So this jail was actually constructed in 1832. The walls, the floor, the ceiling are all made out of granite. The gentlemen were kept on the bottom floors. The upper floors were actually kept for the women. Both of the buildings are obviously very old, and I was immediately struck by the amount of history that would have occurred at these locations. All the trials, the court cases, hangings, sentencings. It's a lot of negative energy for one location. It's thought that ghosts are comprised of energy, and of course in order to manifest they need to take it out of their surroundings. It seems like these locations would be a good place for that kind of activity. I actually was doing a tour one night in the courthouse. I finished with the group, and because this is a historic site for Canada, at the end of the tour, we're very careful to do a complete inspection of the building. Well, I usually have a set route that I go through the building every time. Instead of going into the judge's chamber through one door, I went in through the other door. And when I went through the other door, there was this black figure curled up in a ball on the ground almost like a black cape over him, and then it also had like a hood over the head. It scared me, I jumped, and it turned and it looked at me, and it was the first time I had ever seen it, and it was almost like, oh, she sees me, and it flew in the air and it disappeared. Other people have described the exact same one that they've seen him. He is not nice, he's mean, he torments. To the point one day I actually came in the building and I came in by myself. And it was like he immediately knew he came running behind me and I could feel the breathing on the back of my neck. I turned around and I yelled at him and I said, don't do it and stop it. 
So from then on, he actually, now he crawls around on the floor and I will feel him in my legs and he has been seen many a time. So um, Elaine, what, what was this area that we're in right now? This originally at one point was for storing wood and then later on it, the bathroom was brought in. Okay. But this was the room that we had the very, very first experience in. I was doing a tour of the courthouse. I came in and I had two women with me. But I started telling them the story of the last hanging in St. Andrew. As I was telling them the story, I started hearing really unusual noises coming from a room behind us. I opened the blind and I checked to see if there was anything outside and there was nothing. You know, and when I came back out, as I said to them, I said, well, it must have been the pipes. And they're like, mm -hmm. no, it sounds like somebody was being thrown, like being beaten up and being thrown against the walls in here. It's only been twice. We heard it once at other time that it was actually not like the floor raising up and down. It was like someone being thrown against walls in this area. Wow. Yeah. The initial base readings on the electromagnetic field detector for the courthouse were fairly high, about 2.5 to 10 milligauss. And that's about 10 times higher than any other location that I've ever been at. It seems likely that if ghosts require energy to manifest themselves, to interact with us on this plane, this would be an obvious choice for them. Then as we were leaving that room, my EMF meter started to respond a little differently. If there is a spiritual presence, a soul, um, in the area around us, can you now, you can see how if this is your presence, how it's responding to this machine. Can you hold steady up between 2.5 and 10 in the yellow bar? You're not our puppet, we're just curious. Then it went down. It did. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Thank, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. So we always felt stuff here. Yep. <laughs> anyway, um, Please feel free to interact with us in a nice way. Or if you want to leave some sort of uh, voice recording, I have the ADR in my pocket. Hopefully that will pick it up. It sometimes changes when I say the word soul. For some reason, like it'll give me, like it'll go ding, mm -hmm. or drop while you saw the first time I used the word. Um, we're going to move out into the main room now. Feel free to follow us if you'd like. Continue on our tour. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Moving on. We had you had a tour out here at one point. Yeah, uh, this is the main um, room of the courthouse. We've had a lot of different things happen here. This particular drawer is a famous drawer of the courthouse. This is actually where, at one point in time, the sheriff sat, and it had to be a boring trial one day because he carved his name in the drawer. Quite nicely. He did a beautiful job. T. Jones Sheriff, October 1844. I always refer to my buddy in the courthouse. I've been told mm. many, many times about a man in the courthouse that follows me. Mm. They always describe a man who's not really tall. He's probably about here, mm -hmm. um, dressed in a suit, mm. has a hat, has a tie, just a nicely dressed man. And he follows me around the building. And he stands beside me quite often on one side. So he's just came affectionately known as my buddy. And that, so he's, he doesn't scare me. He's friendly. What other things do here? The other one in the building is not nice. He is, I don't know how you would describe him to me. He reminds me of the Grim Reaper. His face is like a skull. And he has been seen many times and I've actually seen him. Is there any particular place that this other presence is felt? Where he likes to be the most. He will come out here, but the judge's chamber is his number one. Interesting. So the judge's chambers. The judge's chamber is the most active in this building. Do you think potentially it was someone who met their fate on them? Or do you think he's tied here some other way? I don't know who he is. He's just here. Evil. When Ghost Cases returns, Holly's going to see this. Holly and I discover a piece of dark history in the courthouse cellar, and Holly investigates the judge's chamber. The 
does an evil spirit haunt the old courthouse in St. Andrews, New Brunswick? Holly and I continue our investigation. So this is the judge's chamber. You always notice this room is way colder than the other rooms. Yes, it is. <laughs> Big <laughs> temperature change. Yep. Yeah. Actually, I just noticed that it's like a wall when you walk yeah, in. Yeah, as soon as you hit that door, it's like temperature changes. That is summer, that is winter, that is all the time. There's definitely something very peculiar about the judge's chamber, and I noticed a, a cold spot within it immediately upon entering with Elaine. Earlier during her interview, I had almost felt that someone had actually come in the door behind me and was standing over my shoulder. It got very cold, and I was a little disconcerted. She actually asked, has that room gotten cold in there? Because apparently she had actually sensed the dark spirit go in there. Did you? Did he like go through the wall? He disappeared. It disappeared. disappeared. It disappeared. He went up and disappeared in the sky. So basically, up where it's white on mm -hmm. the walls, it was about that high, and it just disappeared. That was my first time actually seeing him. But other people, they all describe that's what they see: the white face. It's almost like a skull, and the black cape hood and he can fly so as I say that is definitely not something that visit no no <laughs> so he is the evil one of the building I don't know if it's because this is where people were sentenced to be hanged what causes him to be here or because people that are bad come through this building mm. and he's preying on them or he's trying to get good souls but this is a hangout for him while Holly and Elaine explored the courthouse, our four infrared cameras had been activated. For the most part, nothing anomalous had been recorded, but there was one particular clip that caught our attention. In my opinion, light anomalies like this have perfectly rational, non-paranormal explanations. Many people, however, believe that these so-called orbs represent ghosts or spirits of the dead. In this case, we leave it to the viewer to decide for themselves. Meanwhile, I followed up on a tip I had been given by Elaine's husband, that the gallows which had been used to hang Tom Hutchings were located in the basement of the courthouse. Went down, had a look, and sure enough, there they were, a very unique piece of Canadian history. So, <clears throat> welcome to the basement of the courthouse. What was it originally? The basement of the courthouse. Oh, but, fantastic. But what they have down here now is through here. Dun, 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 dun. It's all very exciting. It's very dirty. It is very dirty. This is the original trap door. Let's get you close and have you stand on it. This is the original <laughs> trap door for the gallows. Seriously? Yep, that's it. So you would have stood on this and met your maker, but it gets more interesting. Ooh, do any of that things. Over here, this is the lever. I don't think it works anymore, Paul. I don't know, you're still here, so apparently not. And this was the locking mechanism. So this was the original gallows, trap door, lever, locking mechanism for all those poor souls that went to their demise. Many of whom deserved it, apparently. Perhaps one or two didn't according to the stories. So some of the ghosts may still be here, I guess. There are many places you can go in Canada where you can see an original gallows. So this is what? Dismantled. Pretty neat. So this would have been where Hutchings? Well, he would have been hanged out behind the jail, I guess. True, this, not where, but this is. This is what would have hanged Oy. the British Air Force guy Hutchings in 1942, was it? 42, I think, so. Finding the last remaining pieces of the gallows used to hang Sergeant Hutchings was a sobering experience, and it certainly made the execution seem more authentic. From there, we went to interview Janice Fairney, who was the archives manager in Charlotte County in New Brunswick. Her office is located right over the jail cells themselves, and she confirmed not only her belief in ghosts, but her belief in ghosts at that location and some of the things we had heard. As archivists, we keep the records for Charlotte County. Probably our largest collection is of, of St Andrews, which used to be the Shire town of the county. I think there are spirits wandering the earth. 
we get quite a response from, from individual visitors. Some people are, um, have to leave, particularly the jail. Uh, they feel a, a presence and they can't stay. Sergeant Hutchins might be in the jail. Certainly I have had some experiences when, I, when I'm in the old jail working and um, particularly in the winter time and I will be upstairs and I can hear somebody downstairs so I talking and I will come downstairs and there's no one there. It sounds as if someone is talking in that room. I'm sure that there are spirits there. This is the old jail. Watch your step. Oh, thanks, yeah. Thank you. Hello. This is the old jail. Ooh. It's cold out there. It's colder in here. What? <laughs> oh, no. Well, it doesn't feel so bad. It looks nice. Well, yeah, the walls are all granite. This is great. Oh. Floor, oh. oh. ceiling, walls. Notice the temperature. Oh, oh. my. This is um, delightful. It's those are very not, tasteful. That's these are very small cells. Yeah. So which one was um, Airman Hutchings' cell? The guy, that the last man the hanged. Down at the end here. Nice, very and nice. I presume he would have been hanged not with this rope, but with <laughs> something like this. Yes. During the Second World War, a large number of Air Force personnel were stationed at Penfield Ridge, a base located not too far from St. Andrews, New Brunswick. One of them was Tom Hutchings, an RAF sergeant who was the last man hanged in St. Andrews in 1942. Hutchings was convicted of murdering a 19-year-old local girl named Bernice Connors. They had been seen together leaving a dance in nearby Dead Man's Harbor on the night of June 5, 1942. But she never made it home. Two days later, a search party discovered her badly beaten and partially buried body in a field near the community dance hall. Hutchings was tried and convicted in October 1942 and hanged at 2.02 a.m. on December 16th of that year. Either the gallows weren't built properly or the hangman wasn't very good at his job, but it took Tom Hutchings 18 minutes to die. And that's a hard way to go for anyone even someone like Hutchings, who deserved his fate. This gruesome execution and the horrible crime involved definitely raised the possibility that Tom Hutchings continues to haunt the property. That's why Holly and I thought Hutchings' old jail cell would be an obvious spot to try and make contact with his spirit. Just for good measure, I thought I would try antagonizing the spirit by bringing along a noose on display at the jail as a trigger item. Come on in, this is where we're gonna... We? Yes, we. You and me. Holly, uh, it's waiting. It's so tiny! Yeah, it's the... Um, what the... No! <laughs> hey! Hey! Oh. No, no, no. When Ghost Cases returns, Holly and I try to make contact with the spirit of Tom Hutchings, an RAF sergeant hanged 60 years ago for a brutal murder. Does the spirit of an RAF sergeant hanged for murder in 1942 still haunt the old jail in St. Andrews, New Brunswick? Holly and I are about to find out. Here we are in the actual jail cell where, um, in 1942, uh, this was where the British Air Force guy, this mm. is the actual cell, where he was hanged. Not by that. Not with this actual rope, but this rope would have done the trick. These rooms are tiny, dark, cold. This guy would have had nothing better to do but sit on his bunk like we were and think about his future date with the gallows which, to make it even worse, were actually being built right outside his cell. No further EMF readings. One degree Celsius. We've only been in here for 20 
57 minutes. It feels like an eternity. It does. I shall call you Noosey. <laughs> you are my friend. I knew what Paul was trying to do by putting the noose around his neck. Antagonize the spirit of Tom Hutchings into making some form of contact. I can't say I always agree with his tactics, but I had my EMF detector and we had ADR set up to hopefully record any kind of voice anomalies. And we had the camera set up in the far corner. I don't know. I'd like to think that you know, maybe they could, uh, maybe maybe humor's the way to reach ghosts. But who knows? I mean, it's respectful humor. We're not disrespecting. You know? Well, well, it's, I'm curious what it felt like, and I think you know if you're going to sit, it actually really does. I mean, you a good yank. So, no, not you. <laughs> a controlled yank that I can control. You breaking my neck. Holly and I had been in the jail cell for the better part of an hour, and nothing had happened. We decided to turn the lights out entirely to really try and get a feel for what it would have been like to be Tom Hutchings in there waiting for his execution at night. And that's when things got really weird. Oh, f That was weird. Yeah. What? I have a very strong feeling of something in front of us. Really? And the EMF went off. Oh my god. I'm not kidding. Me neither. I was sitting here and all of a sudden I felt this cold go around my throat. What strikes me most about this experience is the fact we had the one thing that skeptics are always looking for, corroboration. Two independent witnesses seeing or experiencing something at the same time in the same place. In our case, different things, but still, that is the kind of evidence skeptics are always looking for. And then, and then the uh, electromagnetic field detector also spiked at the same time that we're having an experience. And then to top it all off, it happened again. It's up again, it's up, yeah. and it's gone. Okay. See, there will be camera conf I cannot see the EVP thing. There will be camera confirmation on that, that just before you said that, look where my head went. Back down, I felt the same. Are you serious? Yep. I went, the camera will confirm before you said it, I went like this, right back <coughs> down in. Like, I don't actually really want to expose my neck at the moment, because it's kind of creepy. Ugh. I don't think I've seen you like this before, Paul. Yeah, well, I got a thing about strangling and necks and throats and stuff. Maybe in a previous life I was hanged. The noose was funny, because the noose is no threat, but, and this, who knows? This is an unknown. Uh, okay. Look, spook time's over. <laughs> We're spooked. The feeling of being strangled, if that's what it was, was definitely an uncomfortable experience. Now, I'm a skeptic. I believe in evidence. I'm well aware of the subjective nature of what happened to me in the jail cell that night. But I'm also aware that whatever happened, happened. I can't discount it. I can't explain it. All I know is I felt it, and it felt real. During our time investigating stories of hauntings and paranormal activities at the old jail and courthouse in St. Andrews, New Brunswick, Holly and I definitely had some strange and even disturbing experiences of our own. I'm a skeptic, but these experiences have led me to consider the possibility that we really did come across the spirit of Sergeant Tom Hutchings 57 years after he'd been hanged for the brutal murder of a local girl. One of the ironic parts of this story is that the historical records for the entire county now reside in the jail. The paper records that document Tom Hutchings' sad story, the pictures, court records, and newspaper clippings, all of these are here sealed for eternity, like a prisoner, in the same jail where Hutchings himself spent his final days and where his tragic soul may continue to linger and haunt the residents of St. Andrews, New Brunswick, over half a century later.